He's like, the there's a the line busted on the tank and it freaking spilled gas all over me and my freaking balls are on fire. <laughs> What's up, HVAC crew? Dennis here, HVAC R&D. We've got Ryden here. We've got uh, on the other end there. We have no guests, so it's just us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance. Maybe not. Maybe a We're good not show. that bad. I know. We got some good stuff on the notes here. Um, so, yeah. Sit back and... Uh, see what we got going on we got a lot to uh uncover we got i think we got jobin voicemails to get to we've got uh we've got a 30 minute promo from riding so uh oh, let's let's get it going challenge accepted <laughs> yeah come on just the two of us we can make it if we try So what's up, HVAC crew? Welcome back to another episode of HVAC R&D. And you know, like Dennis said, I've got a nice 30-minute promo coming up, so let's see if we can knock this out. Um, Not saying that we're trying to get through it all. We're very gracious to everybody that supports us. So So yeah, last week we talked about mental health as tradespeople with our buddies the HVAC doctor and the HVAC foodie. And if you think you might be feeling depressed, stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed, then today's sponsor, BetterHelp, is here to help you. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to listen and help you. You speak with your therapist in a private and online environment at your convenience. And with their network of over 20,000 therapists, BetterHelp is equipped with a broad range of expertise that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. You just go on, fill out the questionnaire, to go through and assess your specific needs and then you can get matched with a therapist in as little as 48 hours and then you yourself schedule your secure video phone sessions or you can also exchange unlimited messages back and forth completely confidentially i know last week i shared some of my wife's experience with better help and it truly was life-changing for her during her recovery and if you truly commit to making a change and seeking help it is okay it's okay to not be okay and it's okay to reach out And at any time, you can also request a new therapist at no additional charge anytime. So join the 3 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist, and you can get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash HVACRND. That's BetterHelp.com slash HVACRND. All right. So pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 kind of happy they're they're coming on board here. This is uh, it seems like it's sweet. It, I don't want to say sweeping the nation, right? But it's it's pretty uh, it pops up a lot on Google and other things, right? And uh, can't leave HVAC out. No, and you can't, man. And and I'll be honest, we're tradespeople. So <laughs> yeah, we're, we're tradespeople. We've been on both sides of the fence. You've been on three sides of the fence. Um. Uh, you know, it's after the last couple of years we've had with shortages and everything else, I will tell you, and you know it yourself, you know, buddy, I felt burnt out and worn out 
you know, doing my job. I know plenty of techs have, plenty of business owners have. Yep. You know, guys, it's okay. Sometimes you just got to talk to somebody. Nothing wrong with that. So, you know, yeah, the very, way they got it set up, it's, uh, I like the way they got it set up. You know what I mean? Yep. They make it easy. You can build it into your schedule, you know, but just, you know, also got to remember when you build it in your schedule, build it in your schedule. Don't build it out. Right. You know, take the time to take care of you. That's okay. Yeah, go check it out. For sure. So, that being said, thank you, BetterHelp, for stepping up and being there for us and sponsoring us and helping us to go help some of our fellow tradespeople. Um, also, I got to plug again the uh, HVAC R&D Pink Warrior hat. You know, we're in the last last Double week of yeah, last week of October. All of these hats are being sold with all proceeds going to help breast cancer awareness and fight breast cancer. Save the tatas. Guys, go buy your pink hats. I got a couple more that I packed up today to go into the mail tomorrow. So come and get them, fellas. Um, also, please make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Linktree, and also, very, very importantly, um, one of our favorite new homes is over on Trade Hounds app just for trades people community camaraderie fostering a big old trade family um i actually posted a lot of exclusive pictures over there um from my trip down in texas so if you guys want to see them um click the link in our link tree off of our instagram bio and you can go join us on trade hounds if you're not there already if not go search for us hvac r d podcast we're on there um you can probably Search hashtag HVAC, and I guarantee you we will pop up pretty quick. So what's our crew size over there now? Um, It just went over 1,100. So we actually have a bigger crew on Trey Towns now than we even do on Instagram. So thank you, everybody. Nice. Um, okay. Yeah. No, it's, it really is a cool, cool thing. And like I said, you can really see a lot of different work from other trades that you may not even have thought of. Um, I could sit on there and watch these guys freaking – use excavators and dump trucks all day i'm oh, like a yeah. big kid <laughs> right yeah so it's everything well yeah you know. yeah i mean it's literally everything i think they've got 52 or 50 listed trades and then two kind of options for like other or alternative if you don't quite feel like you fit in the mix but you're still right. included nice okay um so also in uh rounding out our shameless self promo 10 minutes here um make sure you register for ahr 2023 in atlanta we will be down there in the podcast pavilion february 6th through the 8th we're going to be recording live from the showroom floor in both podcast pavilion one and two we're also going to have some meet and greet sessions with myself mr dennis and the ladies behind hvac r&d hopefully mm-hmm. their their beauty doesn't overshadow us and they kick us out um We'll try to make up for it with our comedy. Right. Um, Going to have some cool swag giveaways at the meet and greets. And also, hopefully, we'll have some of our show guests uh, join us for those. Um, it looks like we we almost might already have all four of our show hours booked with guests. Uh, I think so. I just, yeah. I don't know when we're allowed to release those. I know I've got to submit them just to make sure everything's copacetic, but I think we should be fine. Um, but, I'm still still running into texts when I'm doing training that have never heard of AHR Expo. I know, and I still hear it too, which, you know, I can't say anything. There's a million conventions that I've never heard of that I've kind of learned about in the last year or so. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I, everybody's like, would you go to this one? Did you go to this home show? Did you go to this over there? I'm like, I, I didn't know there was like, such no, a thing. No, didn't have a clue. No, um, it's working. Yep. <laughs> can't go to all these things. I know, right? So Monday schedule, we got meet and greet from three to four, and then we're recording from four to six in Podcast Pavilion One. And then on Tuesday, we're recording from three to four in Podcast <coughs> Pavilion One. Hey, Cody might be there too. I don't know. Yeah, he's like, hey, what's it? He's like, am I going? This is bull crap. He's <laughs> like, so yeah, three to four in Podcast Pavilion One. Then we're gonna have a quick break from five to or four to five, where we do a meet and greet session with our guest, 
And then we will be recording again from five to six in Pavilion Two with another guest. And then we will also have our third meet and greet Wednesday, our longest one of the trip, from ten thirty to one. So come out and see us, everybody. I was gonna say if you if you go on Instagram, follow AHR. I think they'll put all this out. Yep, they will. Um, once yeah, once they finalize the full schedule, I know right now they're still. There's still a few open slots in both of both the uh, recording days, one, two, and three. Um, we might jump into another one. We don't know if we get another guest. We might do that. It's uh, at this point, you know, we got to let everybody get their time into yeah. though. So we want to make sure everybody gets gets their show time in that they need. So I can't go claim everything, right? Because well, we, we need could to walk just sit there from see stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because we could just sit there from ten to five and bullshit every day. You know, we could. <laughs> oh yeah crush that like hey you over there come sit down right now let's talk <laughs> you look interesting um and like i said any other info all the link tree information you can find or excuse me you can find the link tree in the bio of our instagram for anything else on social media um and always reach out message us if you got questions and uh thank you for listening everybody all right peace good night i need a beer again Yep. All right. Well, appreciate everybody listening and uh, see y'all next time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So I got a, I got a, it's, it's a sad night on HVAC R and D. Um, I'm in a hotel in Raleigh. I've already done my pre gaming. So I've already had a couple beers at the old Carolina L house. So I've got on here, red Oak and Coke. Hmm. Nice. I'm not drinking red oak and coke. I am. Uh, I've already had my red oak, and now I'm drinking a coke and eating peanut M and M's from the uh, lobby down there. So that's what I'm talking about. The brew of the week is a Coca Cola. Coca Cola, as they would say in the South. Coca Cola. Coca Cola. Coca Cola. It's all a Coca Cola. That's true. It's all Coke. It's all Coke. <laughs> No pop. Orange drink, grape drink, it's all Coke. Purple drink. <laughs> Fudge brownie. You yep. have. I never I still I never had that. You say that. God, every the time. freaking brownie chocolate, man. I mean it can't be they bad. Were, they were always in the R C machines. Ugh. I still think R C is one of the best. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out the setup here. I gotta get my mic right. I got a squeaky chair like Ryden used to have. It still squeaks on the old school podcast episodes. Yep. All right. So what are you uh, what are you drinking on? So I've been drinking Yellow Jackets all night. Yellow Jackets. But I actually, if I'm going to pop one, which I feel like I need to go get another one to pop it, just so we have a beer sound. So hold on one second. All right. And he's off. No, Zach, these are not caffeine pills. I still never called them that growing up. Yellow jackets. Never heard that. that that's got to be a mountaineer term. I, now I can't remember what the hell a yellow jacket is. I don't forget about it. I wish I could talk so much junk about him while he's off wandering around can't think of nothing though need to ask him if he washed his car today alright did you go to the store <laughs> no I went and grabbed a <laughs> bottle of water so I didn't want to go open another gallon oh I brought like a handful of ice cubes back and put it in my cup So yellow jacket, I, yep. I, I, I blank. I can't remember. Yellow jacket, the banquet, the banquet. That's right. God, I keep thinking. Caffeine yes. pills. No. <laughs> I mean, that's no, it's not a stacker too. <laughs> that's just all I can think about. <laughs> no gas station remedy here. <laughs> I do not have a tall boy. I d- <laughs> nice singlet. There she is. There you go. Now the good old now we Coors, can yep, good old Coors banquet, brewed out in Golden, Colorado. <laughs> the yellow jack. God, this chair is horrible. 
Dude, my chair was rough in Texas last week, too. Oh, you were making all kind of noise. Like, I couldn't I couldn't move without going. Were you near the AC? The the PTAC? No. No, the PTAC was... I was about the middle of the room. Wow, what a, what a shitty unit a PTAC is. Yeah, it's not cool like those over-the-window Medea things. That, right. <laughs> I mean, these things come on and you're freezing your nuts off. It cuts off and then you're sweating and it cuts on. And you're freezing. It's just, it's just, it's short cycles. Like the rooms are always sticky. Well, you end up having to set the thing to freaking freeze so that it'll yeah, even you, keep running to have air movement. You set it on snowflake. That's yep. what you set it on. I'm I already put it down. At... I can't put it down any further. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Mine's a GE over here tonight. Ah, oh, dang! I can't remember what the name of the one was. On the most of them are aren't like, they? No, it was. No, the one that was in uh, the other hotel. I I can't even remember what all I actually told about the Texas trip last week. Anyway, since it was kind of just starting, <clears throat> but um. So I had a confirmation for one hotel, got to it, it actually wasn't my hotel, so then I had to carry my luggage like a quarter mile around the corner to the other hotel that now was my hotel, but no one had sent me an updated confirmation for. Mm. Now, I will say I'm very glad that I was in the other hotel, because the first one was a freaking crap hole. So sorry to all the guys that got stuck over there. My uh, Spring Hill Suites is pretty sweet. Yeah, other than the Spring fact that, usually. other than the fact that my TV didn't work the entire time, and uh, yeah, that's the centerpiece of a hotel room. Yeah, like if you ain't got um, a TV, you're just kind of. Luckily, I had a podcast to keep me busy. Right. Um. But yeah, TV didn't work the whole time, but outside of that, and then. They asked uh, when I checked in, like, do you want your room cleaned every other day? I was like, sure. You know, don't really need it, but, you know, freshen up the towels. I'll take it. Um, (laughs) Right. Well, they never cleaned my room. The only thing they did do was come in and reset my thermostat to 72 every day. Oh, geez. So I'd get in there. It'd be like freaking 11 o'clock going to bed. I'm like, really? It is hot as balls in here again. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, that's like what a, I mean. The humidity, if it's if it's in the summertime, I mean these things are just terrible for humidity. Now it was ironically cold as crap uh, for I guess that time of year in North Texas while we were down there, and naturally I brought like one freaking long sleeve anything. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed. Yep. Yeah, today I was uh, doing a counter day open house in Columbia, South Carolina, and it was the armpit of the South. It is. It's the armpit of hell, It did man. not let me down today. Everywhere else down here is like 75. We get down there, 85. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? I, I just drove an hour from my house. Why is it 10 degrees warmer down here? God. I mean, it was just like August. There's probably like some crazy underground, uh, like anomaly that's so deep underground that no one knows exists because they haven't really looked for it. But it's the reason why it's ten degrees hotter all the time or something. Yeah, I, I don't just know. see something weird like that being the case. I know after. I know after uh, oh two thousand eight two thousand nine man. Columbia took a beating. It's uh, it just looks on the struggle down there. I don't know. Tracy's you know from there. She'll tell you the same thing. I mean, and see, I I never spent enough time in Columbia to know. Now, I just worked. Didn't recover. You got the college, and that's it. Yeah, the only time I was there was in 2011 and 12. So I kind of saw it. I guess probably at at really part of its worst. I guess right in a way. <clears throat> and I had a, a buddy I worked with that was there. Of course, a bunch of buddies I worked with when I worked for um, for Ferguson down there had it. Um, or were from there. 
but I never really even spent much time in the city. I just worked in the branch. Yeah, it's just the uh, the college, you know, Carolina down there. It's pretty much all it's, they got going on. How how big is that school now? Like, what's their That's enrollment? I haven't even looked. It's big. University. I mean, it's an SEC school. Google riding. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm on it, man. I hear you. What's that sound when you're on hold and they're like, it's That's like. It's actually not as big as I thought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't stand that thing. <laughs> it's pretty it good there. That's pretty good there. I'm pretty. Yeah. It's like a, like you mic'd up a hamster eating a nut. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> uh, 34,731. So it's actually smaller than I thought it would be. I don't know what to compare that to. I, yeah, that number doesn't really. So I think University of Texas is like 40,000. Okay. Like Texas at Austin. UT. Enrollment. Nope, it's bigger than that. It's 52. Hmm. Hmm. All right, what's this? University of North Carolina, twenty nine four sixty nine. So there we go. That's a little closer. Chat enrollment wise. Yeah. What's App State? Eighteen two ninety five. Jeez. So That's Corey has officially applied. Sweet. Because he had to apply for App, but then he also had to apply for the Hayes School of Music. At app separately, you know they had a whole. He had a whole another biography and resume for that. Yep. Um he's got audition for that too. I know he was practicing the other day. You were talking about that. How's that coming? Well, he's got so he can practice his snare stuff, but they want him to. He's got audition and play a solo on a snare. He's got to play a solo on a timpani. Now, what's a timpani? Explain that one. So, timpani is like you're sitting in a chair and you have the really, really big drums around you. Like floor. Oh, I, I guess gotcha. you could say floor like toms. Like the gigantic kettle drum type thing. Kettle drum. Yeah, I mean, when you hear like a, a movie coming on, it's just like, you know, yep. it's those. Um, you play them with mallets. Can we call them rumble kettles? Does that work? I mean, they look like street drums. <laughs> street like, drums. I don't know what they like. A, you join a drum circle? What the hell is that? Yeah, is that a trash can? What is that? So he's got to play a solo on a timpani, and then he's got to play a solo on mallet keyboard, which would be like a, Ooh. you know, like a marimba or a. It's not a xylophone. Xyl. I'm saying it. <laughs> Ryden said it. Yeah. So all the all the instruments in the band. I'm like, Corey, that kid's on tuba? He's like, it's not a tuba, Dad. I'm like, oh, that's a tuba. I know what the hell a tuba. He's like, it's a zoosophone. I'm like, (laughs) it's a tuba. It's a ginormous tuba. A A A zoosophone. zoosophone. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, there's a difference, apparently. What the hell? Nobody plays a tuba at Fort Mill. Only zoosophones. I'm like, whatever. So um, I feel like a zoosophone is something you should be able to hook up and play music through. Yeah, zoosophone. It's like the updated uh, zoosophone. Sounds like something off the Cat in the Hat. <laughs> yeah, so it does. A, a triple sling jigger. Zoosophone. All right. So yeah, right, we so. never. We always have this one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, marimba, um, timpani. You'd think I'd be, I'd know all these things at this point. So yeah, he's got audition for the marching band as well. That's a whole nother thing. Um, but we do have student for a day coming up November 17th where we go. I sit with him in class. They've sent us his schedule. So he's got a whole schedule of classes. Um, I can't wait to do that. That's going to be pretty good. Then we get an hour lunch and then, you know, 
me and Sea Dog in college for a day together. That'll be a little. That'll be interesting. He's just gonna talk about lunch the whole time. He's gonna talk about lunch the whole time. <laughs> so we anyway, always have this on our be notes. Focused. Good to be focused. We never do this. We uh, never follow up on our last episode. Oh, that's true. We talk so about last, it and we just get into it. Yeah, well, our last episode with Foodie and Doc, man. Epic. Very epic. Um, I was listening to it again today, the intro with Doc coming in. God, I need to listen to it. I listened to it. <laughs> he crushed <Friday>. it. <laughs> But half of it, I kept losing. Oh, he did crush it. The commissioning tag team champions of the world. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I, I tried hear. to put, I tried to find some wrestling music for him, but it was all just, it didn't fit. But the Monday night football just fit. I don't know why. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that one and there's the fox the fox the football and fox there's a whole other song that's it's catchy say <laughs> <laughs> <Stay> there <laughs> yep mm-hmm. yep but so yeah doc's crushing it yeah they- <laughs> now everybody in their car is doing that you know it i'm gonna put that in there um so yeah he's killing it on instagram yep both of them most definitely and uh speaking of that uh i'll plug it again here one more shelfless plug and i promise i'll shut up um don't forget the uh, epic milestone giveaway that's going on right now. Um, the posts are all originating through HVAC Doctor, but you got to be following HVAC Doctor, HVAC Foodie, and ourselves. Tag your buddies in the comments. Everything closes on November 4th. So I know this will be going out on what, the 28th? So you still got another whole week. Go out there, yep. tag some buddies, and win some swag. Speaking yeah, of swag, he's got some good tools on yeah. there. And speaking of swag, we have we have new stickers on the way. So oh, yeah, they're in route. They are in route. So uh, stay tuned for those because I feel another round of sticker swaps are coming up. Yes, we're due for some stickers. Yes. Um, did you ever get our wall built in your massive underground layer? No. <laughs> too busy with the golf simulator i know how <laughs> oh yeah no so that's where we're gonna put it yeah I'm, I'm literally you know what i think i'm gonna do i'm gonna get a four by eight sheet of white quarter inch paneling the shiny you know like you yep. put in a just quarter inch paneling i'm just gonna lean it up against the wall and we're gonna start filling it up because we got you we've got a ton of stickers right you hadn't stuck them on anything no i have not stuck them on anything all right we gotta start that so four by eight sheet that's a lot of stickers yeah all right everybody step up let's go that's like four sections of somebody's van behind their seats that's true their 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 wall behind the van behind their seat in the van well actually it's like the entire it really is more like the entire thing behind all the seats if you could actually get to all of it. Right. Yeah, I'll work on that. I'll grab a sheet of that at Lowe's. It's probably only, you know, 150 bucks at this point. Nice. Um, <laughs> you know. I don't know. All that all that plywood stuff has tripled. That plywood stuff. I like how you said that. Yeah. Just anything 4x8 sheet. It's yeah. it's went way up in price. Yeah, you might as well just buy a four by eight sheet of metal if you're going to spend that much money. Yeah, beaded or have... flat? Flat, please. Flat, please. Yep. Because then we could just we could just get like one buys and like make a little frame for it, and that'd probably still be cheaper. Yeah, I mean, metal <laughs> might look better for the industry. Heavy metal. <laughs> All right, so what have you been? Uh, what have you been getting into uh, since while, the last episode? 
Well, so I was still in Tejas uh, during the last episode, um, right. doing some training, uh, getting to see the world out there a little bit like Dennis. Uh, I was out of my bubble. <laughs> <laughs> um, out of your 10 mile radius? Yes, I was out of my bubble. Now, come on now. <laughs> a little better than 10 mile radius. Jeez. You're right. Yeah, that's pretty small. I mean, I don't go to Rockingham all the time anymore, but I still go out there. Yeah. Charlotte's a big town. It's a big town. Um, I think it's what, number 15 fastest growing, or number 15 in the country now or something? Crazy it's like be that? It's higher than that. Traffic is just blows there now. <sighs> Dang it. Since last year, I'm just like, God. I'm moving. I'm moving north. I'm moving out in the middle of nowhere. All right. Here's the 200. <laughs> we are number. We are 15. Tonight. We are number 15. That's what That's I thought it was. Pretty good guess there. What's well, Raleigh? I heard, I heard it say that in the airport. I swear. Everybody keeps saying Raleigh's. The traffic out here is way worse than Charlotte. Raleigh is 40. And it is. 40? It's ha It's just barely over half the size of Charlotte. Population wise, 40, 40th place 40th, on 40th largest city in the country is Raleigh. Oh, I thought you were talking about fastest growing. No, this is size, okay. period. We're, we're different, uh, yeah, j different now. Size. Okay, well, yeah, now, look at fastest now. I can city. look at percentage of population growth since 2020. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> No, so we're not the, making no, a spreadsheet on this. It's already made. I just had to sort. I just had to sort it. So, <laughs> the largest percentile of population growth <laughs> in the last two years is Enterprise Nevada, which is actually Enterprise's uh, suburb outside of Vegas. Hmm. They're at ten point two percent. Let's see, now C Cary, North Carolina, is. One, two, three, the eighth largest change by percentile. Oh, that's where I'm in at the last tonight. two years. So Cary is now 182,000. Now, if you were to if you were to compare, like Raleigh, Durham, Cary, Chapel Hill, uh, Hillsboro, all that in there together, probably against like the Charlotte metro area, and include right. like Mooresville, Gastonia, Monroe, all of that. You're probably pretty close to about the same, I would think. The Charlotte area is probably still a little bit bigger, but right, yeah, because Durham's up here. Durham's 294. So I mean, Durham and Cary right there, plus Raleigh. That's the size of Charlotte. Hmm. If you roll them all together, yeah, because Charlotte's 903,000. I'm trying to move where there's like 1,400 people. All right. Fastest. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Fastest shrinking city. <laughs> yeah. Dennis is like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. When I Let's tell go. everybody where I'm moving, they're like, where, where's that at? I'm like, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm not telling you where it's at. <laughs> oh, really? Where, where, what'd you get that land for up there? I'm not telling you. That's it. You just don't worry about it. I know a guy. I know a guy. <laughs> it's an importer exporter. Yep. So, as far I mean, I'm still doing the same thing. I'm training. Um, I did have a training class Monday um, at GoPro Motorplex in Mooresville, which is a go kart place, outdoor track. Indie style track riding would have loved that. Yep, would it have. wasn't uh, go fast turn left. I wasn't invited to that class. Uh, <laughs> you're always invited. I'm always invited. Yes, that please. might have went over like a turn the punch bowl. In this I'm, one, I'm sure it would have. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'd have known a few people to sit with. <laughs> so as of yet, you know, as everybody knows, you know, riding's riding's in sales for a distributor. I'm, I work for a manufacturer's rep. We do not rep the same product. Not anymore. But, 
you know, I think that's a good thing for you guys because riding can cover certain things and I cover certain things. That's right. Um, so, it, you know, we get a lot of content out of that or and we all, can. Yeah. And all is fair and love and HVAC. Yeah. I mean, it's just different. You know, we're, we're here to, to spread different parts of the industry to you guys. Um, so, yeah, that's you're going to start seeing more of that. Um, so I was, uh, I was trained. We did, I did a two hour training class and then we rode go-karts. Um, our buddy Zach, you know, he's, can't wait ah, for story. God, <laughs> you know, old Zach return of the Mac Zach attack. Um, can't go through a whole day without something happening to him. He just can't. He jumps in the go-kart. He's pumped. He's out there on the track. I'm in there trying to pack up, you know, the system and the heat pump and furnace and all that. Zach comes walking back in and the whole front of his pants are wet. And I'm like, Zach, I mean, they they were fast, but they weren't that fast. Like, did, <laughs> you, had, you had a little trouble out there? Did you have a Billy Madison moment? He's like, no, damn it, it's gas. <laughs> <laughs> like what he's like the there's a the line busted on the tank and it freaking spilled gas all over me and my freaking balls are on fire <laughs> i'm like what he's like yeah i had to go to the bathroom and try to like wash it off i'm like you can't wash gas off bud that ain't happening i mean he he would walk in the room where so he, they, they had a room where i was training nice size room but that's where the screen was to see where how your lap times are <laughs> he would walk in there he wouldn't be in there a minute and everybody's like god what is that smell it's gas it's so so bad what is that and he's like it's me the freaking cart spit spilled gas all over me <laughs> and he was like telling that guy he's like well what cart you putting there now because because everybody was assigned that cart number and that was your cart the whole time. So he's like, y'all get that out of there. What, what's my next cart? Um, nah, he was, so it got even better. He called, he texted me that night and he's like, man, about halfway home, I realized I was still driving my Explorer, like the go kart. <laughs> he said I was making turns and squilling tires. Like, taking turns way too fast going home <laughs> he's like i finally realized i'm like what am i doing here that's like yeah, when uh, the first time you saw fast and the furious in a theater and then you walk out and everybody's like oh tearing ass out of there <laughs> dude that well I'm, oh, man, i can't believe you brought that up so i had i had my 70 chevrolet pickup my c10 and it had like a 383 stroker we come out of there after watching that movie and it, we raced everybody in the parking lot <laughs> <laughs> it was on it was on everybody's revving their motor up I'm trying to think of how old i was just living life a quarter mile by the time i don't know 17 <laughs> 18 yeah i mean it was just i was not old uh, enough dang it right now i gotta know I think it was 99 but let's see i graduated in 2000 so 2001 oh yeah i was right in the wheelhouse so yeah you were graduating and i was a freshman you weren't even driving <laughs> nope <laughs> Yeah, I drove to the theater and saw that. Man, we come out of there. It was like, oh, shit, it's on. Too funny. Turn the music up. So we used to ride around with the the windows down and the heat on, like, in the middle of the wintertime. Oh, we did it, too. That was the move. Yeah, or the sunroof open if it was way too cold, if you had one. And that truck I had, you know, it's got that... All, that, all the only heat vent was in the just in the center at the bottom like under the radio but those heater cores in in those older trucks man it would be hot as shit in there and you can't turn it down it's like on or off um 
Yep, I remember that. That was that was a good time. Then they came out with fifty more. Yep. What was well, it? I guess eight. We had, we had that, and we had too fast, too furious. Too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Corey will always tries to like. We're getting this. We're getting something from Subway. What you want? He's like tuna, no crust. <laughs> <laughs> he always does that tuna no crust <laughs> Trace is like seriously Corey what the hell do you want <laughs> and I was like it's coming again oh yeah <laughs> you know it you can't get that from Subway tuna no crust pretty sad story there Ugh. that sucks um so yeah, race some go karts. They were they were quick, man. They were. Uh, I think on the back straightaway, it was probably, God, it was probably two hundred yards long. I mean, they said you would you could hit about fifty five at the back stretch, which nice. in a damn go kart, man, is moving. You could tell it was still pulling, but that back that back stretch it it was like a hairpin at the end, so you had to break. Um, so one of the 10 lap little features I was in, I come around this turn and this guy was, he was just driving super reckless. Oh, and it, it finally bit him and he hit the, you know, the little hump there started the spin, but then it got to a violent spin and he lost his shoe. Like I hit his shoe. Oh, damn. I come by and run over his shoe. I'm like, damn, was that his shoe? <laughs> You know, we're just, it's just literally a bunch of contractors out there just acting a fool on the course. Um, yeah, so they got his shoe back on and there he went. He was good to go. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, we have got to go back up there though. It's yeah. It's in Mooresville. No it's a, uh, it's a big track. So they, they designed the track after a track in Italy. Um, that was there from like 1960 to 2009 or something, but it wasn't pretty Imola. sweet. It's not around Emma, is it? No, I didn't think it was. I remember I could see part of the track in one of your posts. I mean, I was in the middle of nowhere. Oh, so I'm in there training, right? I just got started. I'm going Car through Drummo like in Parma. That's what it's after. Yep. Okay. Sorry. So I'm Google. going through the training. I just got I just got started. I'm kind of going through what we're going to cover. And I hear this really loud, you know, we're 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 at a racetrack type deal, so I don't know what it is. These three contractors show up in a helicopter. What? Yeah. One of them flies a helicopter. He landed out there in the grass. They walked in, sat down at a table and was like I'm like, uh, you 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 don't want to talk about that? Like, you can't just <laughs> roll in here in a helicopter and not talk about it. Everybody's looking at him. There's probably 50 people in there. Yeah, he's got his pilot's license, and it's a four-seater. Kind of looked like the old Myrtle Beach classic, you know, you take rides in. Nice. Um, now all I was, can see is the... That was interesting. All I can see is, like, the ghost entrance from Casper. All I can think about is it looked like Mash coming on him flying in there. <laughs> it looked like that chopper. It was, yeah, rolled in there, got him some training. He actually did good on the on the track too, naturally. Um, so today we had a counter day. Um. This was my first big counter day with a distributor where there was like 20 something reps there. So this was interesting. Everybody's got their table, their stuff. They got their little spill. The contractors are going around getting all their swag. And um, I just felt like a carny. That's what I felt like. In a good way or a bad way. Just, just un, you know, show up with my heat pump and. <laughs> Get it all out, do your spill, pack it all back up, go to the next town, you know? Yep. 
that's cool though i mean i love talking to the contractors they come over there a lot of them hadn't seen it before or, you know but well and it's also curious i'm sure especially in you know going to your first ones in places that's not been one of your primary markets you're just like hey everybody holy shit yeah i mean trade fox or subco um oh man there was literally 25 was it infocon i mean everything mars motors i don't know i go on and on and on there was three different uv light companies now, um, did did you know any of the other reps that were there, or any buddies kinda, of ours that were out there that day? Yeah, or? The, uh, I recognized a couple faces. the The Mars guy. Oh, okay, I can't remember his name. He was there. Um, Starts with a P. Yep. Let's see. Oh, well, you had a uh, Global was there. Oh yeah, Our friends Global from Global was there. were there. Um, Elaine, Elaine yep. was over there. Uh, she kept looking at me kind of funny. I think she recognized She's me. Like, I know you, but I don't <laughs> know you. I just, I couldn't I get you. away. It was, and she had a ton of people at, at their table. Um, yeah, it's weird to see the contractors walk through and they stop at certain ones. You know what I mean? Yep. They'll walk right by something. And, uh, now, were you set up in the warehouse, or were you set up outside, or how was warehouse? That? Okay, so they had a giant horse. They they had us in a horseshoe shape. Gotcha. Um, we got there. Our table was labeled with our, you know, with our name. It's like, oh, geez, seating chart. Yep. Then we come rolling in with all this equipment. I got a furnace. I got an outdoor unit. I got a full running system on a car. We come rolling in with all this stuff. I'm running power across the warehouse floor. Nobody else needed power. I'm like, I got to run this thing. Like You're this like, thing I'm, ain't as, yeah, it's, it's like not I cool if it ain't right. running. Yeah. So I yeah. Guess, we, guess uh, you can't stare at the, the working UV light that, that doesn't work out too good for you. No, you're right. Can't do that. Uh, turbo torch rep was there. I kept hearing that thing. I was getting ready to say, was, uh, <laughs> do we get some, uh, brazen with nitrogen, uh, examples? No, he just kept firing it up, you know, the, uh, yeah, every two seconds, I'm like, shit, there he is again. Um, you gotta have something like that, you know? Oh, absolutely. A little show and tell. So yeah, it was interesting. And then, uh, you know, it's, it was from 10 to one and at one Oh five, it's just like a bomb went off. Everybody's yeah, just packing up. <laughs> There's a ton of contractors, though, that came through there. This was in Columbia. Now, what kind of uh, what kind of swag do you give out? Um, actually, I like to give out the magnetic trays. Nice. Sticks on the unit, and you hold your screws. Yep, because not everybody's okay. got cool, uh, you know, built-in trays for stuff like that. <laughs> yep, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Some of them have nothing. Yeah, so they'll... But they I mean, I never products, used so. one in the field, right? I never used one in the field because I feel like I would just leave it there. Um, It's kind of something that'd be good around the house or in your shop, you know, but I got some of those pins, uh, koozies, hats, you know, um, tumblers. Dude, we should do a... Uh... We should do a, a, a dentist themed giveaway. You could do a dentist theme, themed giveaway, and I'll do a riding themed giveaway. What you gonna put in your bag? I brought back some from some swag from Texas. Oh, so we'll just literally okay. Yeah, I, was, I thought you were like, what would you put in your giveaway bag? Like a notepad and a pencil and a, right. calcul and a calculator <laughs> with, a no with a note that said, "Do yeah. the math." <laughs> Do the math, yeah. Which, that's a good segue for you later. We'll get there. All right. Mine's going to have a... Uh, yeah, you need like a Rolodex and... I can't remember. Did I, did I send it in, in the group text to you to you and Grayson? 
uh, when we were in Texas. When Ke- so I sat next to to our buddy Kevin and and one of the other uh, teams from North Carolina, and two of the other guys sat up front. And um, there was one point when they were going through a slide, and one of the literally one of the slides says, um, "Make sure to do the math in this." And I just I took a picture of it and and circled it and pointed at it and said, make sure Kevin sees this. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I didn't see it. Well, cause I put, I put it in one of the reels too. <laughs> cause I oh, said, cause I said, do the math, <laughs> the note pointing at it. <laughs> do the math, Kevin. <laughs> I'm glad he don't listen to this show. We pick on him a lot on here. Oh dude. I, I'll admit I had so much fun getting to spend like some, an extended amount of time with him. Cause, cause outside of, just a few few other times I really don't get to see him very much. Right. Um he's a freaking trip, man. Yeah, I miss hanging out with Kevin. So Yeah, it says on here you did you knew the guy that got shot out of the cannon at the fair? Yeah, so um Is this the, Bryson City Fair? No. No, this was the the Asheville the Asheville oh, okay. Mountain State Fair. So this that was actually the September before I met my wife, or before I met Kristen. Um, but I was there doing tiger photos because I worked for a zoo that did tiger photos in in North Carolina at the Mountain State Fair and the Raleigh State Fair every year. Like but Tiger King kind of photos. Yeah, yeah, Tiger King kind of photos. I'll, I'll, ah, Tiger King. <laughs> I'll go find you some photos and send them to you. <laughs> Have I still have I not ever showed you the pictures of me of the freaking tigers? Kristen's got some too from, oh, from the no. from the year after. I do need to see those. But anyway, go I, ahead. Um <laughs> But yeah, uh the girl that was like his assistant was trying to get a free tiger photo. So she ended up hanging out with us, me and, and Barry, the guy that I worked for, and some other people like the whole time and then God, I'm trying to remember what the guy's name was that that she was, she was the one that pulled the string to shoot his ass out of the cannon. It was even funnier. <laughs> um, no, that dude was nuts. And like his whole family had done like it. That'd be a ride, man. Yeah, and like his whole family had done it for decades. Like he was like the third family member in line. To generational. Now the yeah, he was like the third generation to get shot out of the cannon. <laughs> <laughs> So it's when like, I was little, I was I used to think. I mean, it was just like a spring board in there, or is it? I mean, I, I dude, he he did not reveal his secret. Although it had be. to be it had to be something in there because, dude, it launches your ass out of that thing. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be a slide in there. Your feet are on a. I don't know. I'm, I I'm, I'm sure it probably is. It's got to be something like that. Yeah. No, you come out hot though, for sure. Oh yeah. You hear the boom, and then you look, and there's just the dude flying through there. Well, air. that and he would be freaking loaded half the time too. So I'm like, this might not go over too good. <laughs> <laughs> the best quote from last episode is is Doc's like, if we're all out in the woods trying to kill a bear, we're all going to be loaded anyway. <laughs> uh, oh man. <laughs> Dude, we I had, was thinking, yep, that's that's all of, that's true facts, right? There. <laughs> Dude, we had some of the best one-liners in that show. He's like, "We're all out in the woods together. We're all loaded anyway." <laughs> <laughs> On some wobbly pops. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's a. Uh... All right, so <laughs> this is not a crawl space confession, but it is. Since nobody will email us any of these, oh, we're just well. Do we have any? No, of course not. Oh God, bunch of pansies! Somebody turn in a, a funny story. Come on, I know right, you so have them. This is from a guy that I work with. He's so so he counts. He's in the HVAC industry. Yes. Crawl space confession episode seventy one. I'm gonna have to do those on the all the intros. Um. Yeah. So, one of the salesmen for us got his uh got his two daughters in the bathtub tonight. His daughters are one of them is uh like I don't know she's barely one, 
and his other daughter is uh i don't know second grade right so they're in the bath just messing around playing and he's on the phone with me he's trying to talk work and i can hear him playing you know and i'm like dude i don't you, you need to go and he's like no no, no I'm, I'm good and we're talking and i'm sitting at the bar you know so i'm good <laughs> so i'm good <laughs> i'm good I'm, i got plenty of time <laughs> and he's like oh man palmer just shit in the bathtub and i'm it just hit me wrong man it just i was dying at the bar He's like, gosh, she just she just dropped like three nuggets out. So his small one just deuces in the tub. That's hilarious. Which I remember Kylie doing that when she was really small. And until you experience that, it, it's just messed up, man. It's just a whole lot going on there. Usually Tracy had to come deal with that. I was like, oh, nope, I'm out. Got to go. So yeah, that that happened. That happened tonight on the phone. <laughs> I was like, he's like, I got, I got to go. It's like I yeah. got to go for sure. Yep, def- definitely got to go. <laughs> of course, his older daughter. She's like, oh Palmer, God, now I got no. Now man. we got to get out of the bathtub. <laughs> now we got to get out. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, Palmer, Palmer crapped in the tub. <laughs> Freaking kids, man. They're just little animals. Oh, speaking of animals, Ryan just sent a picture. Oh, God, here's the cannon guy. I forgot about this. Where are you getting these pictures? Facebook. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah. MySpace? Oh, man. All right, here's the cannon guy. So, all right, the guy holding the tiger there, that was my boss. That's Barry. Here's the cannon guy. If that doesn't tell you where he was most of the time. Oh, yeah, you can't be normal <laughs> doing that. He looks like he's gone. And then here's here's his assistant. God, I look like I'm 12 in this picture. Where are you putting that picture? That was on Facebook, too. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. Yep, whole ride on it. Yeah, you look like you're 12. Yep. <laughs> Tiger King riding. Then you worked at a zoo with the bears like you? Oh, yeah. Crush. Yeah. I think you missed your calling. I'm trying to find uh, if I got a bear photo for you. Oh, there's when that jackass hit my car. The, oh, well, geez. one of my cars. Dang, is there one in here? Oop, there we go. I'm not with him. This was outside of one of them's cage. There you go. I was studying him in his natural habitat before we found him in the woods. Before we were hammered. <laughs> <laughs> we were, yeah we were loaded before he ripped our face off oh damn it actually I feel like I should leave all these in the notes so that we can laugh at them 10 years from now yep leave them in the notes oh damn well hell should we actually you want to get into a few minutes of tech talk and some sales talk and we'll actually teach some people for a few minutes <laughs> yeah so that they actually well, yeah. get a little bit of their time's worth out of our dumb asses show <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know. We, <laughs> I swear this is an HVAC podcast. Yeah, I promise you it is. We breathe the air in and exhale. I was going to give a. I was going to get a give a golf tip just for Doc. I don't think he wants me to make it a golf podcast. <laughs> I remember Riker just sounded like a pig with that snort, and he was just doing. So what you got? You got you got some sales. So you got some sales talk, and I got a little bit of tech talk. Yeah, uh, you want me to do sales talk first? Sure. All right. So I thought I would go into just a few things about uh, transition twenty twenty three. I can't remember if we discussed it or not, but I know the terminology M product and M one product started really showing up. You know, early summer. 
at least enough for people to to start noticing it. And people constantly are like, what is M? What is M1? Honestly, until last week, I didn't have a clue. But it actually refers to the section in the code where these new updated regulations are taking place. So M product is like Appendix M in the manual. Which is how they're testing it, though, right? Correct. In a nutshell. Yeah. And then M1 is the new appendix. Or or would it be appendix or appendage? Appendicide? I'm not sure. No. Appendix? Okay. (laughs) It's not a bendage. That's... No. But, uh... So M1 is the new form of testing. Right. But no one ever explains that in anything. So you constantly like, well, what the hell is M1? Well, and that appendix is like 400 pages. Yeah. It's where all the brands are in there. Like, we if we tested this, we can't produce this. You need to test mm-hmm. it differently. Like, it's all back and forth. Almost like it, it's like straight legal jargon. Yep. It's hard to read. Yep. It is not a good read. I tried to look into that and. Whew. And then not, not good. Yep. So then the next part of it, well, obviously we know that the main part that most people do know is that instead of being tested on point two, everything's being tested between point five, point six in that range. Right. Um the other part I didn't know is that they were changing uh how they were rating pressure wise or something across the coil. So instead of it being three sixty five, now it's four forty. That mm. I didn't know. I can't remember exactly the terminology of it, but um, I'll go through my slides and we will try to maybe revisit a little bit of that next week. Um, Now, is that brand specific? No, no, that's part of that's part of it, too. And and I think, you know, one of the things I've seen besides the fact that every single manufacturer just about just about is holding pricing extremely close to the chest. Like that's an understatement to how lock and key M1 pricing is from everybody. Um, Right. I have seen just a handful of new AC prices, but, and see, I've seen a handful from three different brands um, and just minimal, minimal amounts, but I haven't seen coils, furnaces, nothing else that's new. It's literally just a few SEER 2 ACs. Um, And then I think the reason a lot of people are still saying like, well, we do have some ratings, but we don't have coil information. Well, I think a lot of people thought current coils would rate better than they did, but because they changed how the coil ratings are done too, which I didn't know that until last week, I think that's Mm -hmm. what's setting people back with their coils for for a ways is that other change is throwing things way off. So what have you seen on the changes on the AC side so that they can achieve 14.2 um, under the new M1 rating? So some of it you're seeing, at least on my side, you're seeing 7 millimeter coils or 7 millimeter. Right. It's diameter, not thickness. So a lot of people are like, well, that just means our coil is going to leak. No, it just means your coil holds less refrigerant. Right. Which allows you to... They can get more... That's it. ...surface area without Correct. going larger. Correct. So the one good thing is I know your brands, one of your big advantages is you have really small outdoor units. You do. Good on you. I know you do. Um, right. One of the things that that 7 millimeter coil is going to help for us is it's actually going to help our outdoor units stay smaller as well. Because I have seen the spec sheets on some of these other brands new, just even base tier 14 sear stuff or 14.3 sear 2 stuff. It's freaking massive. Yeah, it's not going it, to. It's not, it's not going to work in a lot of these, you know, situations, or especially when you got these houses stacked right on top of each other and trying to have clearances. Good well, luck. So on my brand, you know, the whole idea was for them to, you got so for them to carry it through a front door. So it's 29 by 29. Now they'll go taller, right? But yep. Um, it's got to be 29 by 29 because of certain areas up north. Shutting the street down to crane over the house is a huge expense. Yep. So 
two guys just pick it up, carry it through the house, right out the back door, set it down, be done. But um, now, that being said, what I'm training on is a full inverter product, and you can achieve different things. Yep. Um, when you have a single stage or even two stage product, and you're trying to achieve certain things, you got to get more more coal surface. Yep. So you're gonna have to go bigger. You either got to go taller or wider. Um, you don't want to keep adding rows. You know, I think two is max as on as far as I'm concerned. And we're staying all single row, which is nice. And yep. I think what also is you know speaking of the inverter side of it, what's also gonna blow people's minds is you're gonna see this is your outdoor unit for a single stage 14 seer, you know, base model. But then we go into the mid, like the mid tier stuff that are multi stage, and these twin ro- with these twin rotary compressors, your mid sa- mid tier stuff is going to be smaller than your single stage stuff. It's going to be the complete role reversal of what you've been seeing for years, right. and it's going to mess some people's heads up for a minute. I think. I love how homeowners are still like, my why is my neighbor's unit bigger? I don't think you give me the right sear, or give me the right tonnage. It's like it has no. Has nothing to do with it. Well, they don't know. No, I mean, nope. Why is his so big? I think you gave me too small of a unit. That's, <laughs> that's what, what she said. She, that's what <laughs> she said. <laughs> All right. So pricing hadn't really. Yeah, I mean, everybody's worried about them redoing product, and what's that going to cost? Yep. Well, and the other thing I'm seeing, some brands are trying to th- are acting like they're going to give out pricing but then they're still going to give you an increase. And then there's other brands that just want to be able to give you a price and not have an increase, but because it's already freaking November basically. Right. So <laughs> dude, I don't know. And and I'll tell you like the, the level of frustration with contractors is getting there. And honestly, we've been in the same boat. Trust me. We have been fighting to get pricing for months. Well, and it's freaking ridiculous. Contractors come up to me and they're like, what's this going to cost? Well, Whatever you're having to pay for it, more than likely, so is the other guy. Yep. And it's just going to have to transfer down to the homeowner. Like, you going to have to keep doing what you're doing. Yep. You can't just keep going around trying to find the cheapest equipment. It, you know, we got to get away from that. Like, get it by the, you know, partner up with a distributor. But somebody can get you a decent price. When I say decent, I just mean that they're not just gouging you. Um, and come up with a multiplier that covers you, your labor. You make a little off equipment. You make a little off labor. And you got you to gotta build your pricing. That like, You know, the homeowner gets that. I mean, they should. I know that as a yeah. consumer. I'm going to get it. You know, I'm going to get it on, on something else too, you know, whether it's gas or when I'm buying my truck, I'm going to get it. Yep. I mean, so I just don't realize, I, I don't understand why on this side of the industry, like it just contractors act like it just can't work that way. Yeah. They're like, well, how am I supposed to make money with it costing this much? Well, you, you should make the same as you did last year. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if not more. Yeah. Right. Well, and you just, and, just and gotta, there's you got a pay raise. Well, and and honestly, the best money to be made in the games on the contracting side. And I know most of them, half of them, don't want to believe that. They always think that we're lying to them as the distributor, or that we're lying to them as the rep, telling you, <laughs> oh the yeah, money is on the contracting side, boys. <laughs> That's the truth. They know that. Yeah, I mean, it's the the markup. The markup for our industry is is awesome, you know. It's it's a great industry to be in because of that. Um, because I'll be honest, I used to be, you know, I was a carpenter, right? I was back in the day. Those jobs still pay the same. Running trim, running crown mold, running, you know, um, those jobs still pay the same. That they haven't progressed because it's not really a skilled trade, so to speak. Um, I don't know why they haven't progressed, but they just haven't. So be lucky you're in the industry you're in for sure. 
Um, so what else with that? You said you're saying everybody's going to be holding all this stuff hostage. Well, I think the problem is, <clears throat> I think the problem is distributors are kind of getting caught in the middle because you got right. the manufacturer that's trying to push their margin to cover all the money they just spent on all these, all this engineering and all this other stuff. Now, some brands, I think, some brands, I think, spent more on engineering now to try to make it pay off better in 25. Right. Where other brands have, you know, <clears throat> they've just lopped off some of the bottom and tried to re rate and they're moving on. But they're still going to have to do some re engineering. Oh, yeah. So I think, you know, that's, that's going to be one flip side of. Well, maybe someone seems cheap right now, but in a year when they have to start re-engineering their own stuff, they may not be. The other thing is, you know, if if the gamble of hacking off some of the bottom stuff to try to re-rate mid-tier stuff doesn't work out, and they can't get the ratings they need, then products are just going to disappear or be useless. Right. So, you know, what happens if your manufacturer just lopped off 14 sear and kept 15 and you ordered $2 million worth of this 15 sear unit. But well, we get to December and they can't get a coil to rate with it so that you, it won't pass for next year. And you can't, so now you can't go put the thing in. Well, and I heard from some people now I'm on this side, like to get an AHRI number, is around a hundred grand per number yeah, to produce not, that. It's not cheap. So the more matchups you have, the more numbers you have, the more it's going to cost. And that just gets the manufacturer is just going to hand that down to the, to the equipment. Yep. You know? Which is why you're seeing some manufacturers got rid of more half tonnages than others did. Right. Cause that allows them to reduce you know, probably. I feel like half tonnages are almost gone. They almost are. You I don't. Know. I don't think they'll be around a whole whole lot longer. But I'd say at least the next. I mean, that two stage is it's almost gone. I think based heat pumps. I think the next efficiency increase you see, it'll be completely gone. Oh yeah. Because when they push it to 15.2 or which, because I guess that technically would be the next step, really, because that's what it, right. what we're seeing people do is 15.2. Um, when they push it to that, I would say probably in five years, five to seven, I'd say. I think that's yeah, about seven fair. years is about when five they start. Five to seven is probably good. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're going to see half tonnage at that point completely disappear. Hmm. Excuse. If not, I would be shocked. So on the technical side, I didn't have a lot of like, you know, I threw some stuff up here. We're about to hit the furnace season, gas season, um, heating maintenance. I got a couple points here I wanted to point out. So when you're doing these heating maintenances, always check your temp rise on your gas furnaces and your and your air handlers and your heat pumps. That gives you something to do. I've said it on here before. Um, you know, take your time on these maintenances. That's when you need to learn your tools. Learn some of these formulas, right? Um you got a homeowner's complaining that they're using they you just put a brand new furnace in last year or the year before and they're using a ton of gas you sold them a you know you took you tore out an 80 and you put in a 96 percent, and now they're using more gas than they were before might want to look at your heat rise right um your temp your your temp rises so you probably got your blower set too too fast on heating and need to slow it down so we can get absorb more heat and raise the raise the temp on what's coming out 
I've seen that happen a lot. Um, you know, it fires up and run. Everything looks good. If you don't take a temp on your return, your supply, you're not going to see that. So most, most of the new furnaces have a dip switch uh, or Bluetooth, I should say, to uh, increase or de- decrease blower speed on heat by 10%. You know, 7%, everybody's kind of got their own little thing there. But um, gas pressures, I can't stress this enough. I got this call when I was in tech support a lot. New gas furnaces, whether it's a Honeywell gas valve or a White Rogers, don't assume those are set, ready to go. No. I think you, no, you, a- you discussed COVID. that, I think, on an episode before, too. <laughs> Yeah, after COVID, man, I don't know what the hell happened, but, well, I do know what happened. Um, China. China. Yeah, so, no. (laughs) China. Sorry. (laughs) Oh, yeah, just had to do it. Um, Go vote, everybody. Um, So. (laughs) Yeah, it is next week. (laughs) Right. Or what? Week after next, right? Yeah. I think you can early vote, like, right now, maybe. Mail-in um, ballots. <laughs> Get your mail-in ballots here. Oh, God. <laughs> yep. Re-count. Now Re-count. Political, no political show. Um, so, yeah, check your gas pressures because you can't assume it's right. I've seen several that for, for natural, there's, they fire up, and you really can't tell by listening or looking, but it's firing off at like 5 or six, you know, instead of three and a half, and that'll usually end up, a lot of times it'll trip out the main limit, uh, especially if it's a zone system or something like that. So, um, and please lean your 90% furnaces towards the front. Yes, please. <laughs> for water management. Yes, please. Yeah, Ryden, come on. Get the 59 code over there on Ryden's yes. equipment. Uh, but see, even on the furnaces that I'm training on now, they're all the same, right? They're all built level. Nothing's built on a tilt like your horizontal drain pan is on a coal. Furnaces are built level. So look in the manual. It says half inch to three quarter inch, or it might say quarter to half, but lean it towards the drain. You know, if you turn it horizontal, lean it towards the front. Um, that's going to save you a call back. And that's all I'm here for, you know, save you a call back. That's right. That's what we do. Um, the formula, I know everybody's driving. You can write this down. Um, checking CFM, checking your airflow on an air handler, right? You got basically the easiest way to do it is, well, you got to remember the 3.414 that, that number never changes, but, Take your volts on your up at your heat kit times the amp draw times 3.414. You get that number. All right. And then you get 1.08. That's another constant number that never changes. You multiply 1.08 times whatever temperature difference you have. So if you've got, you know, take your return, take your supply, you got 28 degrees or so divide that by your number you just got up top there volts times amps times 3.14 3.414 sorry yep and it'll spit out a c pi oh god i know it'll spit out a cfm number but these are things i used to do on maintenance calls to, to to kill time but you don't realize how much you're learning when you're doing this how what the system's doing um I used to love calculating CFMs on a, on a heat pump system with an air handler with this because it's dead on, man. Because you can take static and look at the chart and uh, go, you know, check it against these numbers and it's dead on. So, something cool to do instead of banging the uh, vacuum cleaner around and leaving. Um, You know, it's a nice time of year. 
Get up in the attic. It's not too bad. Check gas pressure. Check static pressure. Drill some holes in some duct. You know, just 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 good practice. Learn how to use your tools. Well, and also, I know you, you mentioned it before, too. This is also a great time to just walk yourself through sequence of operation. Oh, yeah. That's a good one, especially on a furnace. Well, because we, we're, 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 we're coming out of cooling mode, and I don't care how good you are. The first furnace call you go to of the year, you're just like, all right, here we go. Shit. It's been a while. <laughs> What's supposed <laughs> to come on first? Yeah, I mean, you've been doing this you know 10 years and it's still that first heating call you gotta back up and punt right sequence operation what comes on first what leads i mean that's huge with a furnace if you don't know that it's gonna be hard to troubleshoot it um so yeah there's your tech tips for the heating season boom mic drop mic drop um oh and Jobin left me a voicemail again. Oh, here we go. Good old the Jobinator. I don't I, I can't remember what this one. I don't think this is very this is not very appropriate, but uh oh. It's kind of fitting for the show. Let's see what we got. Oh, God. <laughs> Hang on. Hey, Dennis, this is Chopin. Hey, I've got a really big problem going on right now. I've got a real <laughs> crisis going on. Oh, boy. I came down to the, the sit-go on the corner here in Charlotte, and I'm in here taking a poop, and I ran out <laughs> of toilet paper. There is no toilet paper anywhere. So the only thing I could do is call you to see if maybe you can drive me some toilet paper. <laughs> if not, I guess I'm going to have to throw my leg up in the air and use the hand blow dryer to dry it. But then that's just going to cause me to be real itchy. So I got a problem, and I'm, I got a service call that I'm supposed to be on right now, and I can't get to them because there's no more toilet paper. I'm never coming to a Cisco gas station ever again. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Poor Sitko. Poor, yeah. Totally, Poor got, totally got shit on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Not going to have Sitko as a sponsor. <laughs> um, <sighs> if I walk into a bathroom and some guy's got his ass under the hand dryer, <laughs> it's going to have to be Jobin. Huh. He does exist. <laughs> God almighty. Um, yeah, because then it would just itch. He's right. Yeah, you can't do that. Oh, All right. Geez. What a way to end the show. Yeah, well, you know. You never know what he's getting into. No. What did he say? Oh, yeah, he's fixing window units now. That's all yeah, he works on. He's fixing window units. I should call him back. I haven't called him back ever, actually. That's true. But he's just a well, super gonna, good guy. How are we going to get the voicemail? <laughs> oh. Or, yeah, or, I mean, I can't answer because. Or should we tell Jobin we're going to call him on the show and leave him a message that he has to respond to later? <laughs> uh, right. Please send me the voicemail, Jobin. Jobin and, and and I beg you guys to go on the go on our email and or it doesn't matter what it's on Instagram DM us a slide a, in uh, DMs with a small space God, confession that just sounds terrible <laughs> slide in the old DM <laughs> yeah cross space confession man whatever you got um so we got some guests coming up I think. We do. We've got uh we've got a I'll be honest, like we, we've got um a lot of cool things on deck between now and AHR. I'm pumped. Uh sweet. Yeah. We've got some great guests coming. We've got some <clears throat> some cool uh 
cool new swag coming, cool new merch coming. Um, yeah, new partnerships, new partnerships. So, um, I'm excited, man. Yep. I've been putting in, putting in the time so we can, uh, you know, try to, to build some things for you guys to enjoy as part of our community. So yeah, that's a lot right. of cool things coming. And thank well, you. Sweet. Yeah. Thank you everybody. Yeah. Seriously. Thank you so much for listening to us and uh, supporting us and helping us grow. And, you know, I made, I feel like every week, you know, I'm starting to make more and more uh, connections with people that, you know, we, we literally are doing this cause we enjoy it. We love our trade. We love our industry and we want to see, we want to see other people have fun and enjoy it too. So, you know, we just want to keep paying it forward. You know, yeah, this industry has been good to me for sure. So yeah. I like to, I like being in it. I like to see guys. Um, I like to see techs and installers and stuff at these trainings that are young and hungry and excited about it and not a grind, you know? Yep. So it's a good industry to be in. There's a lot of stuff to do to get into and. That's what we're trying to do is spread that and give you some insight on any of that, you know? That's right. And then, you know, and if you guys ever have questions about, you know, distribution, questions about rep agencies, let us know. Reach out, talk, let's have a conversation. Um, it, you know, it takes time to, it takes time to understand how those, you know, distribution and contractor and rep and all those different tiers of, of the trade work together. So, you know, it took, it took time for Dennis and I both to learn that, you know, coming through the trade. So, you know, ask us. I mean, every little bit of knowledge you can get now helps you later. Right. Well, sweet. Well, yeah. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And uh, I got to get up in like three hours. Yeah. So uh, go follow us on Instagram, Trade Hounds, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook. And do not forget to go register for AHR 2023. Come see oh, us. Yeah. February 6th through the 8th in Atlanta, Georgia. Love to see you guys there. Watch us record live. Um, throw us beers from the audience. I'll take it. Um, oh, yeah. We go from there. I'm going to need that for sure. Yes. Like, well, see, we'll, we can have a wrestling reference for Foodie and Doc right here, right now. <laughs> just, you know, just like they used to chuck them to Stone Cold in the ring. <laughs> I'm bringing a champ belt. For Doc. We should. We should get a custom <laughs> one built. I saw a I saw an ad. I saw an yeah, ad. Yeah, red seal a for red seal ink. Yes. Belt. There you go, Doc. I like it. It's coming your way. Yes. Yes. We appreciate being the first North North uh, not North American. Uh, the first <laughs> United States honorary Red Seal members. So thank you. Thank you guys for uh including this and that. Thank you. All right. See y'all next time. Peace. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try.